Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 circuit. This is the feature tournament number two final day. My name is TJ once again. I'm joined by That's Admirable. And uh, we just saw a doozy of a series. I think is the only way to describe it. We talked about it earlier. Three Golden Monkey games in a single series. It was intense. Mm, I think you're muted. I am indeed muted. Um, <laughs> your point was, was great, though. Your point <laughs> was great. I could see it in your eyes, man. I could see it in your eyes. Well, it's dead now. Yeah, Gold Monkey Sweet. <laughs> that, yeah, we'll, that stick, we'll stick with that one. <laughs> it was like it was like a dub. That was uh, you, you said that long sentence, and then at, at the end translated right underneath it. It was yep. Golden Monkey is sweet. But yeah, the next semifinal coming up is going to be Zelay versus Lead Paint, and sort of similar to last time. Zelay is is kind of a story player now, even though he's never had that huge spotlight. He's been around the scene for a while. Uh, he's amassed a decent prize pool. And Lead Paint, sort of an unknown player who's who's tried to fight his way through open tournaments, including this one, to sort of reach reach his success. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're really got a good footing in the pro scene, you know who Lead Paint is. You've probably played against this guy in a tournament or played against him high on ladder. Uh, but he's up against a very storied player at this point. I mean, Zelay, uh, coming off of a Magic background, has a wealth of experience there. Who's actually a Magic Online Player of the Year. Um, in, in one of the years he was playing professionally. Uh, it, but since stepping in the Hearthstone, we're talking, he's won a couple of uh, open turns in the Tuesday Night Hypes. He won BlackRock uh, Mountain Launch Invitational. He won the WCA uh, 2015 Pro Qualifier for Americas. He won uh, one of the eSports Arena tournaments. He's got second place in a Geico Brawl, uh, a couple of top fours sprinkled in here and there, you know, including Seat Story Cup, and uh, he made top eight at I-57 as well, where Dog was second place at that one. Uh, over $14,000 in lifetime earnings from playing Hearthstone. And that's that's the kind of stuff that you know you continue to rack it up year after year. That's what makes you a very good player is having these consistent finishes day in day out, and it leading into a very impressive resume. And just three days ago, he won the esports arena a World Series of Sealed. So even though it's not a, a constructed tournament, uh, it's a little bit off the wall. It's still a tournament win. It proves that he's good at Hearthstone. It proves that he has strong, strong deck building and, and strong knowledge of the game. So he's also got to be feeling confident moving in, coming off a win like that. So we are going to move in, into the series. Once again, this is a semifinal match. So the winner of this match moves on to face Dog in the finals of feature tournament number two uh, for that uh, $3,000 first place prize and also that PAX Prime qualification uh, for uh, the uh, One Nation of Gamers Grand Finals for the 2016 circuit, which also uh, has a, a pretty substantial uh, prize pool, a $25,000 prize pool for that tournament that's going to happen in August. Yeah, very different approach to these mat to this match also for the two of these players. Um, you know, we saw in the first one a lot of control decks. Uh, VLPS not even bringing Druid, him banning out Druid. Both of these guys have brought Druid. They both brought Shaman. They both brought uh, Warlock. And both of their Warlocks have been banned. In this one, so very different kind of matchup uh, that we're going to see in this one, and with Shaman versus Shaman in the opener, this is one of those matchups that I actually find most appealing in Hearthstone. You know, typically you think of Aggro Shaman, you think of these blistering fast starts where they're trying to kill each other, and some player dies to come turn five or turn six when their opponent stumbles. This often turns into a major grind between the two players, where the last threat uh, usually ends up adding up to so much damage that it's unrecoverable for one of these players. Um, and so yeah. while you'll see them kind of playing fast very early on, it very quickly turns into a control style of matchup where both players play kind of defensive with all their cards. In aggro versus aggro, every single decision matters uh, because the game is so quick and a lot of times it can be over so quick. So it means that uh, every single turn and every single play that you make has a, has a, a higher impact uh, on the game overall. And uh, that's, I think that's what makes the, these types of matchups uh, so exciting. So uh, both players had a decent opening hand uh, with, you know, some, some early game minions, not with too much with spells, and some decent early game minions to boot. Yep, Haunted Creeper's got a trade lined up for it here, but if you know Zelay, he's a very patient player, likes to take his time and figure out exactly what he's going to do before he takes any steps. Yeah. Sign of a very strong player indeed. I've played, I've played a bit with Zelay, too, like on the practice side of things. And he's the kind of player who asks himself a lot of questions. Not so much like, what's the best play this turn? But what is a reason to 
play this card in my hand? What's a reason to play this card in my hand? What's a reason to attack a certain minion? A lot of it comes more from just him asking the right questions to himself and a lot less from him just making strong plays turn after turn. I think that meticulous style of play was one of the reasons why he was considered one of the strongest uh, pre-nerf patron players, uh, which was an incredibly challenging deck at the highest level of play. And uh, because he he asked himself those questions, I think he he's he's able to play those you know higher skill cap decks. Um, and I think Agrosham, even though people you know, hate on it a lot, because they lose to it on ladder by on turn five, and they people always tend to have Doomhammer double Rockbiter on turn seven. Um, it it is a deck that uh, takes a lot of skill to play effectively because of how much you have to trade in the early game. It's not a linear deck as, you know, you just go face. At some point, you turn to that, but it is a really challenging deck to play. Yeah, a lot of little tiny decisions that add up to the big picture uh, in this one. Three pretty decent options here for lead paint, but two of them aren't looking so appealing because he's so far behind on board. You know, ideally in this situation, um, you're not behind. You get to take one of the more aggressive hero powers, but here, uh, he's taking the Druid, does have Doomhammer in his hand, so potential for the damage to add up uh, in the long term there. But he's mm-hmm. fallen very behind on the board. And so right now, I would definitely consider this in Zelay's favor. He's got Feral Spirit to back this up. These juggles could matter a lot. Um, but you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Lots of tiny decisions with this deck to make. Uh, and they add up to that big picture. And at this point, he's so he's so ahead on board and he's gone so wide with his position that he's free to now start foregoing the trades and looking to, to get the repetitive damage out of the minions that he has. Um and a lot of this did just in this game kind of add up to the, the Haunted Creeper and the way it panned out versus this board. Just bought him so much value being able to attack into a Lepernome, while Lead Paint wasn't didn't have an opportunity to play his Haunted Creeper. He was having to just play a more solid board state, and that's led to this. Yeah, it's like the difference between reactive play and proactive play. Uh, if you can be proactive, the player that's dropping the threats and demanding answers the whole game, and especially in this quick of a matchup, you're going to be you know the one coming out on top the Boy. majority of the time. Yeah, this this that Doomhammer draw probably sealed this game. I mean, this turn alone probably sealed this game. The fact that Slay had nine damage open on this turn, plus the Argent Horse Rider. Yeah, he's going to be pushing so much damage. There's absolutely no way that Lead Paint finds a way out of this one, unless he snuck uh, an Elemental Destruction in the deck and Slay whiffs on damage for like four turns in a row. Maybe he has a chance, but he's just going to go ahead. <laughs> And concede, and that's Zelay taking a pretty quick game number one. That's a pr- kind of refreshing to see after a, a, a best of seven <laughs> full control mirrors. For me, I'm glad that we got to see like the light and the dark side of Haunted Creeper in that deck, where Zelay was able to make fantastic use with it. But for Lead Paint, he fell behind and they got stranded in his hand. You know, the fact yeah. that he had access to two less cards that game effectively uh, because Zelay took the board so early on. <laughs> yeah, that's, one yeah. of the, that's one of those cards. Haunted Creeper's great. Uh, when you're cut, it's kind of like the first one out of the gate. Uh, really poor though when it's your follow-up play. Yeah, indeed. And uh, um, before we jump into the the next match here, real quick, we just want to uh, remind you guys that uh, Geico and ONOG will actually be at PAX East in just one week. So next weekend, we'll be at PAX East. Uh, make sure you guys, if you're going to attend PAX East, you head over there, uh, check out the booth. There will be some players from. Uh, all of the Geico gaming teams, uh, Cloud9, Team Liquid, and also some players from Team Archon. You can go over there, uh, get some signings done. We'll also be running a major. Uh, it'll be casted as well right here on this very channel. It's a $10,000 prize pool major with a lot of fantastic players. So if you're not able to make it out to PAX East, make sure you tune in online and watch the major that will be going on. So uh, lots of stuff. Make sure you get involved with with all the Geico and One Nation of Gamer stuff that's happening at PAX East. But let's jump into this next game. Game number two, Zelay with the Paladin versus Lead Paints Druid. Yeah, to actually follow up on what you just said, too, there's actually 128 spots uh, to sign up for the major event to play in it as well. Uh, so make sure you check that check that out as well. Your you know, opportunity to compete in that one. Play with the big boys and see if you can hang. A 10K major, and I believe that goes along with saying that that means major status Hearthstone Championship Tour points. So... Uh, if you're someone who's looking, who you know, slacked on ladder a little bit in the past couple of months, and I really wanted to make make a splash at the at the spring prelims, uh, and you think you have what it takes, make sure you guys uh, head over there and, and sign up. So that's at the guyco.onog.gg, the website that's plastered all of our overlays. 
So if you haven't gone there, make sure you check it out. Yep. Yeah, chalky. Oh, signups are on-site only, actually. So signups for the opens are online, but signups are, are on-site. So uh, if you want to make the trek to Boston to head over to PAX East, I know I would if I wasn't literally as far away from Boston as you could possibly get living in the <laughs> continental United States. You're in San Diego, is that right? That is correct. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same position for you. I'm living in East Bay right now. Yeah, so you're you're probably that, equidistance from Boston. Rip, <laughs> rip, rip Arena. Great opening here for Zelay. Haunted Creeper and a Secret Keeper and a Secret. And that's going to help take care of this board. Lead Paint has drawn two copies of Innervate, but not really any action to go with it. You know, typically when you're using Innervate, you use it to get these wild tempo swings on board. Uh, but not really an opportunity to do so. And Zelay, this cog hammer is looking so good in this spot. He's going to hope it falls to that Secret Keeper. Does miss it there, so uh, I would expect to see this Divine Shield used in some fashion this turn. I mean, he could still... Yeah, this forces a Hero Power out next turn if he wants to remove the Haunted Creeper, which is really effective because Druid really wants to play on curve. And uh, forcing them to either play, you know, like a, a three-mana minion and a Hero Power or, you know, not Hero Power and play a five-mana minion. But this, this is double-dipping a little bit. Yeah, that's a very saucy draw there for Blood Paint, too. We're able to punish this uh, this aggressive play from Zelay pretty well. But he's got good follow-ups to this. And this is kind of the difference between when you would take the risk and when you wouldn't uh, in this spot for Zelay. The fact that his turn four, he's got every viable option available to him, um, it means that he can get a little bit more aggressive here and, and take these kinds of risks. <laughs> the old turn five Azure Drake double innervate Keeper of the Grove. That's a doozy. Yeah, Mysterious Challenger picked up, too. Mm. So that's going to be in, in a few turns. Still can't can't make that happen, but uh, it's like has to decide here. Does he want to just play the Pod Shredder and maybe trade into the Mana Addict? Or uh, he does have the opportunity to remove the Azure Drake because he's afraid of spell power or even get additional value by removing the Keep of the Grove. But Mana Addict is actually really threatening. Yeah, I think he. I think Zelay is often going to have his sights set on this Azure Drake here. You know, Blessing of Kings is pretty hard to use. I think given his current hand, um, and since he's got this Mysterious Challenger, he's just looking for the best way to roll into the Mysterious Challenger turn. And so, because of that, he may actually forego the Blessing of Kings simply because he's got Keeper Voldemon and Pilot of Treader to play on turns on this turn four, and then on the following on turn five. Uh, but the Blessing of Kings looks very appealing to me at this point. Like Blessing of Kings, just trade over the Azure Drake, and then. You know, just power play through your next couple turns and hope the Mysterious Challenger is too much for your opponent. Yeah, uh, I, I like this a lot. Even though Mana Addict can be threatening just because one spell uh, makes it pretty powerful, uh, that's given Lead Paint has a spell and is willing to use the mana to utilize it. And even if he does, it removes the Haunted Creeper and then pushes an extra two damage. So he's not too worried about that. And I, I really like the point you made about how Blessing Kings is hard to, to use. Especially since your at least your turn six is planned out. Yeah, so this is going to be a pretty easy trade here for Lead Paint. Uh, it does take five damage in the process. Zelay so also swung at the Cog Hammer, set this Mana Addict to die. Very keen play from him. And so he's going to fall to 18, Pilot of Shredder rolling in a Mysterious Challenger versus Lead Paint, who looks like he's going to have Keeper of the Grove and Shade online to fight this state. So Zelay being at 18, this, does, this is a little bit of an opportunity, I think, for Lead Paint to maybe squeeze in the damage here. But this draw is going to have to be important for him. He just used yeah. Wrath, too. Oh, Emperor Thorson's good enough. I'd say so, yeah. It allows him to fit in a hero power to uh, take out this... Ooh, okay. Yeah, fit I, in the hero like power to here. not take out... <laughs> yeah, just hit, hit in the face. Now Savage Roar becomes much more valuable. Now, Emperor Thorson is unchallenged in this spot, so I don't blame Lead Paint for taking the aggressive stance here in any way whatsoever. And this has got to be a mysterious challenge turn. I mean... Does have option for Keeper of Uldamon, but Lead Paint's only got one card in his hand, so how threatening is the Emperor outside of just being a 5-5 body? Yeah, and he's going to be able to back-to-back -back Mysterious Challenger, which, to be honest, could set up for, like, a two-turn lethal. <laughs> like, if, if uh, he, he gets a reasonable-sized... Um, well, I guess his Powder Shredder's not going to die, but that's a lot of damage that's going to be represented on board if Lead Paint decides oh. to go for these secrets. This is... These are some tough turns here for Lead Paint. He's pretty much had to answer the board state every single step of the way, and while he's gotten in a lot of damage, he's just missing like kind of that one final piece to to put this all together. Mm -hmm. 
Just Either way, he's going to be able to swipe uh, to, to remove this pile of shredder. Oh, good yeah. fall, I think, for lead paint here. Yeah. Now you swipe face. Yeah, that's definitely a swipe face. Wants the extra damage here, too. Attacks before the pilot shredder gets dropped. Uh, wants to uh, wants to bypass a taunt if he can. Blue Gill Warrior. Not really big stuff here. So hit five. He's got to be a little bit uncomfortable. 9, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage available for Zelay this turn. It's not quite enough. I mean, but he dies I, to damage in this spot. Yeah. So Zelay has to set up for a two-turn lethal because if he lets the shade live for for two, he's dead just no matter what um, on in two turns. So he has to trade in and make sure that he's going to have enough power on the board to make it happen. I think just Mysterious Challenger is going to be the way that he has to do it. Yeah, but he's trying to find a reason to do anything other than Mysterious Challenger for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Lepain also has so many outs next turn anyway. Like Savage Roar wins the game. Force Savage of Nature will win the Drew game. the Claw, Force of Nature, Swipe, you know, Living Roots. This is uh this is an interesting play here from Whoa. Zelay. So is going to be running over the, the uh, Emperor with his nine seven. The six five is going to be pointed to face, and then he's going to look to end the game next turn with the power that's on board. But this this draw from Lead Paint this could decide the game. Ooh, what's it going to be? Savage oh, Roar picks it up. One game apiece now between Zelay and Lead Paint. Three more to go for each player. Got to feel good about that one. I really like that line of play, though, because that actually... I don't think uh, just playing the Masir's Challenger would have set him up for a two-turn lethal. It would have... Um, he would have only had it, I think, if Zelay had made the attack and and, and proc the Avenge. So that I think that was a really good spot by by Zelay to make sure that he, he did have a guaranteed lethal, had lead paint whiffed that turn, or forced the shade off the board by making it trade into one of those powerful creatures, either the Masir's Challenger... Well, it had to be the Mysterious Challenger. So, uh, really well played, but unfortunately in the end, Lead Paint just got a lot of damage in early and was able to pull out the win. Yeah, and so many outs at the end. I mean, that's really the big one there, is that just every single card that enhanced damage was enough to end the game. And that's the power yeah. of that aggressive play that Lead Paint had. You know, he had plenty of opportunities, I think, to play it a little bit more defensively. Uh, and choosing to use the Wild Growth before uh, before playing the Shade on the same turn he Wrathed as well. You know, he got two extra damage out of the Mana Addict that way. Uh, everything really added up that game. And so finally, uh, we're getting into game number three now. It's going to be a Paladin Mirror match, but Lead Paint's got a copy of Ragnaros in here. So that's going to indicate a bit more of the top end. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that in this matchup either, because a lot of this one just comes down to who takes the board early on. They keep it, and they roll into Mysterious Challenger. Now, yeah. Lead Paint having the extra Ragnaros, he's glad to be mulliganing it away, but if he draws this on a turn where he needs an early drop... It could just devastate his curve. Yeah, this this match feels all about the turns one through six. It feels, and sometimes you can mount a comeback, but rarely does this deck run uh, efficient board clears. Maybe one consecration. Uh, Consecrations, I think, would be considered like a tech card in this Paladin deck, which is rare for a Paladin deck, but it's just true because they're they're about building their own board, not about removing their opponents. And. Uh, I don't know. This is a pretty awkward hands for both players. Yeah. No, no two drop for Zelay, yeah. but Lead Paint's kind of missing that turn four right now. Does it have coin to potentially shore this up? Which I'm sure he's happy about. Yeah. It's going to be missed from Zelay this turn. His turn three and four are looking very good. And even his turn five. Pilot Shredder on turn five is still a totally uh, good play. But the fact that Haunted Creeper is going to be the first thing on the board here means that this uh, muster for battle loses a little bit of its power. Yeah, Haunted Creeper pretty much trades like one for one for muster for battle. Uh, you leave like a couple charges of lights just, justice left, but uh, it's a really sort of even trade as far as the one ones go. And I mean, he, he could cog hammer. It gives him like a more powerful weapon uh, with less durability, but uh, I, I guess making sure that he can separate that damage a little bit more is, is better in the long run. Yeah, choosing to trade in the Haunted Creeper here as well. Wants to avoid any shenanigans with uh, with any buffs. Doesn't want it to get cog hammered. Doesn't want Knife Juggler to be able to swing this board a little bit. And that's where Coghammer comes in. 
Yeah, this is looking like it's favoring lead paint just a little bit here. Yeah, especially since he has the coin plus Mysterious Challenger already. That means no matter what, his Mysterious Challenger is coming out first, unless a Lothab is played on turn five. Uh, but even then, I think he's going to be in a good spot. Uh, the thing is, he he's, he has to. He's going to be playing on the back foot the whole time until Mysterious Challenger comes out. So, will he be able to push through? Is the question. Yeah, Mysterious Challenger is going to look so good next turn. Oh yeah. Just sets pile of shredder and passes. Chooses not to attack with Cog Hammer. You know, might might need those charges to keep fighting through the board state uh, mm-hmm. in the face of Mysterious Challenger. Doesn't want to have to force himself to use muster for battle in the case he needs a weapon. Yep. All right, so this turn you have to be expecting coin Mysterious Challenger next turn. So Soleil is asking himself right now, what's what's the best possible board state I could expect uh, to be able to most efficiently either deal or most efficiently ignore <laughs> a Mysterious Challenger next turn. And Sludge Belcher makes sense on curve, but there's also merit to just playing Coghammer and and trying to attack in and seeing if you can completely remove the board going into next turn, given that a two health minion comes out. Yeah, but I like this gamble from, from Zolay right here. He is able to secure this too. The fact that he's got two Coghammers too, he wants to make use of these before the other cards. Knows that oftentimes this matchup can turn into kind of a grind battle. I mean, anytime you have a mirror match, there's always that threat of just all the cards kind of trading one for one, and then the final threat is what ends up being a big difference. Ooh, this means he's going to go for Knife Juggler Muscle for battle, so uh, I, I really like this audible being called by Lead Paint and going for a play that's going to allow him to fight back on the board a lot better. And this way he can also coin out Avenge, so that way he gets sort of maximum value out of both of these. A lot of times you don't want to use the secrets before you play a Mysterious Challenger because it means if the Avenge isn't procced, then Mysterious Challenger is not going to pull an additional card out of your deck, which weakens the strength of your draws for the rest of the game. But this time he knows that Knife Struggler is too threatening to leave on the board, so he knows that this Avenge is most likely going to be procced uh, before he can play his Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, it's kind of a brilliant spot here, too. The fact that this Avenge is down... Zelay normally would have a very clean trade with just Cog Hammer and Knife Juggler. But he's thinking about this one and going, what if it's Noble Sacrifice? And so because of that, his play looks like it's better to attack a 1-1 into a 1-1 here. And so can potentially get punished by the Avenge on that side when the Avenge lands on the Knife Juggler. Has to take an extra 6 points of damage. Um, so this this secret here, kind of changing the dynamic of this turn. I mean, normally it'd just be super easy to attack the Knife Juggler. Here we go. The Avenge procs and... Knife Juggler. Hey, oh. there it is. You could set it down to a 3-3 with that Keeper of Uldemon, but Zelay has spent his entire turn thinking about this. He's got to make a decision now. All right, well, he's going to trade into it, but it, he's going to throw it on the bounce. That's six extra damage that he's taken, and he's leaving two minutes on the board. So now this turn from Lead Paint is going to be a Mysterious Challenger, and he does not draw a secret, which is ideal moving into this turn. Avenge would have been like the worst draw in his deck. And it's the full five, even Repentance is here. So now Zelay's plays feel a lot trickier. This is kind of a brilliant move here from Lead Paint. He got a little bit lucky on the Avenge, but this is like really in his favor now. Just making the call to go for that play and being rewarded for it, you know, with with that that variance is 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 a big deal. I think you can tunnel on the fact that hey, eventually on the knife juggler, but making the call to not coin out mysterious challenger, which I think a lot of people would just automatically have done, uh, he was rewarded for it. So I, I like that that line of play. And there's the redemption. And so Zelay still still quite a bit of options for Zelay though. I mean, this is what you see turn after turn with Keeper of Voldemort is that it just gives you so many different things that you can do. And so I like the cog hammer here best. Uh, this is, I mean, basically the reason he used the first one is so that he could set up a second one that looked a little bit better. Knows that knows that it's repentance as well, so jamming down that Dr. Boom looks a lot less appealing into an avenge. I'm sorry, into a repentance. Yeah. So I, I do think, though, that Delay found probably the best way to, to go about that turn. And it, it's all about the board. Sometimes just playing the big minion is not the right way to go. Playing the big minion and hoping things work out usually is not the right way to go, especially in this matchup when uh, even just a little bit of a stronger board means you have a huge advantage going into future turns. 
Yeah, the sludge belts are going to protect these little guys as well. Very good news for him, and that Ragnaros actually looking a lot better. I mean, this is the reward you get for playing Ragnaros in this build, is that when it goes one for one and the Ragnaros didn't disrupt your curve, it is a major threat to the opposition. This is looking like all lead paint this game. Yeah, especially since he had to take extra damage earlier on. He's a lower health total. He's at 17. Now at the end of his turn, again, it's it's sometimes common to see one Consecration. But if there is one Consecration, that means it's it's uh, less likely that you draw it, especially when it seems at times when you need it. So now it just seems like he has to play the big minion and hope for the best, which is something that he was trying to avoid with all of his plays over the previous couple of turns. Yeah. We've seen Boombots change games before. So Lead Paint's still going to have to tiptoe around this one a bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe I lied. Maybe he's just going to go dome and ignore everything. Oh, yeah. Now he knows that it's not Noble Sacrifice, so... wonder if he's ever he... repentance here. <laughs> yeah. None may yep, smart to keep our on this. Just take out the board position. All right, he's still going to make sure that he, you know, keeps the board clean moving into to these future turns. And he's going to be able to push a lot of damage. So... Hmm. Yeah. Interesting if he doesn't trade into either of these. Okay. You might as well let your opponent trade with the boot bot since they're going to die anyway. Yeah, don't mind this. And the fact that he sets delay to 8 too also gives him the extra out on that Ragnaros. I mean, now at any, at any time, Ragnaros has a certain percent chance to be lethal. So if, even if the Boombots rolled perfectly here, there's still a chance that Lead Paint can win. Here's number one. That's not very good. Yeah, he needs this one to snipe off. Probably the Keeper of Oldman would be his best bet. I mean, I guess taking out the Shield of Minibot means that he doesn't die this turn. Uh, there's five, six damage being represented on board. He's at seven health. Uh, can he guarantee lethal here? It doesn't look like it. But he can give himself a pretty good chance. Oh, now he well, can. Well, okay. that's going to guarantee lethal. Sometimes <laughs> you just get it off the top. Uh, but lead, lead Paint, even despite that, had a near stranglehold on this game. Just so much damage pouring out in the early. And that extra six damage that he got from that Knife Traveler uh, with that Avenge play, I think that made a big difference on this game. Like, the fact oh, yeah. that he was so patient with the Mysterious Challenger. Like you mentioned, so many people just coined the Mysterious Challenger and not really thought anything of it. Uh, and the patient play here from Lead Paint, very much rewarded. All right, well, that means he takes a 2-1 to one lead in the series with just Mage and Shaman left remaining. I, I believe the Mage is sort of that wild card deck. Uh, that was the, the the deck that we couldn't see. Uh, it was the, his fifth deck, his secret deck, so to speak, uh, from his group stages. So I'm curious to see what it is. Uh, it, it feels like Tempo Mage would fit more with the style of play that he's going with, especially if he's expecting more Druids. But he could be Freeze Mage. I've, I've known Lead Paint in the past to, to play some Freeze Mage. Uh, some of the, the laughing Freeze Mage. Yeah, I think at this point, Delay's kind of hoping it is Freeze Mage. He's got two decks that line up fairly well against it. Um, but it is Tempo Mage instead. And that's the kind of matchup I think that Lead Paint is looking for. Tempo Mage versus Control Warrior is such an interesting matchup. Because oftentimes with uh, Tempo Mage, you want to open up with Mana Worm, you want to get it. A great tempo play with Sorcerer's Apprentice and maybe like a Flame Cannon, a Frost Bolt, or an Unstable Portal. Uh, but in this matchup, it typically plays a little bit slower. If you get your early game disrupted, you find that the Mana Worm is just so much less effective uh, against this build. You know, say in the face of Fiery War Axe. Um, but it has the potential to play that long game with Archmage Antonius in here. Uh, I've been playing quite a bit of Tempo Mage recently. I've actually been using more of a spare part build with Emperor Thoris on to try to unlock the potential from a couple of Flame Wakers or from Arc Mage Antonitis. Um, so it'll be curious to see how Lead Paint's built his Tempo Mage deck. I know a lot of people don't favor that Clockwork Gnome style, uh, but you do have options to fight control if, if you want, if you so want it to be that way. Yeah, and um, there's also, you know, some cards in this deck that, oh, I was just about to mention, there's some tech cards that you can throw in to make this deck so much better against Control Warrior. What else is Water Elemental? Six health is tough to get through. It doesn't die to even a second charge of Death Spite. And that means that a lot of times that thing's going to stick around or it's going to eat a lot of removal. And if it sticks around, that pretty much locks out weapons from the Warrior yeah. player. So really, really like to see that thrown in there, especially given 
what kind of decks are uh, being played in the meta right now with Shaman, Warrior, Paladin, um, and even Druid, getting rid of that hero power, are all popular decks currently. Yeah, just a strong minion. 3-6 for, for 4 mana is already pretty decent. When you add the freeze behind it, that's really the big one. Mm-hmm. And so I think that Lead Paint is definitely going to look for an opportunity to uh, to use that Water Elemental. And just going to play this as a 5-2. Oh, I kind of yeah. like this. Wow, Bouncing Blades from Zelay. This is really interesting. Oh, going to use it right away, though. And I think this is... When Lead Paint sees Bouncing Blades here, this is like his opportunity to go for the Water Elemental as soon as possible. And yeah. this could be a nightmare for Zelay. Yeah, and Zelay actually just gives a little bit of a smile as soon as he throws out that Bouncing Blades. He knows that that's a weird choice to throw in his deck. Uh, I, I think Zelay still has to hit it, hit this with the Death Bite and be tunneled in on a Bash to, to remove it next turn. And, you know, just take that extra damage and, and take the Freeze for a turn. Um... But we'll see. Oh, okay. At least Darker Seeker sort of fits the same role, but it's also vulnerable to uh, like a fireball, and that means that you can't get that damage from Despite initially. Yeah, could be plenty happy to see a fireball here on the Elise, though. Um, I don't think Lead Paint's going to go that direction. You know, just the fact that he gets the freeze off initially is a, is a big deal. And if Zelate attacks into the Water Elemental, it means he's missing the next turn with the Elise anyway. So it yeah. would leave Lead Paint plenty of time to deal with it. Yeah. Ooh. Considering Arcane Missiles here, this is really interesting. So Arcane Missile Mirror NC is going to be his play. And he is attacking the Elise. Uh, I'm really shocked by that. The Elise is going to trade into it anyway, it feels like, no matter no matter what the, the circumstance. Maybe he's um, trying to represent and, Duplicate with this? Sure, but... I don't think, even if you think it's duplicated as Delay, I, you, I feel like you have to remove it anyway, because you just can't... It's either you duplicate it, and he spends four mana playing it next turn, or you just leave it on the board and get frozen anyway. So, an, an interesting line of play. I'm, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree, but we'll see if it's going to pay out for play off for him, because he still gets the death by coming out. Not a Sea Witch! That not doesn't very, really... Yeah. Not a strong one in Tempo Mage. mage. <laughs> what it does do is allow you to like cheat out, uh, you know, an extra five five with your Doctor Boom. <laughs> but that's about it. If you draw Doctor Boom on, on turn seven, it means you can play Naga Sea Witch for two mana and play Doctor Boom. So that could be good, but it also means you just play more into Brawl. Uh, so I I don't think that's that's going to be a, a great pickup for for Lead Paint. I really respecting the Flame Waker here, too. Yeah. Just revenge and Bash to take care of it. I think Lead Paint's pretty happy with that one. Mana yep. Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Sorcerer's Apprentice, I do know this one very well. And Arcane Intellect back behind it. Mm. Not the greatest pickups for him. Yeah. He can give over a uh, Acolyte of Pain. If he wants. But giving Tempo Mage cards is pretty dangerous. But it's also the weakest minion you're going to have in your deck to throw into Mirror Entity. So I don't think you're too worried about it. Second Acolyte. This is this is this, like the third game we've seen at least three Acolytes on board. Yeah. yeah I'm just going to take his card advantage here. With two Brawls in hand, I think I don't think Zelay is, fin is uh, fearing the threat of of a lot of minions. Basically mm -hmm. at all. Um, and at this point, it's just it feels like it's going to be kind of a card advantage battle. Which Tempo Mage actually fights really well. Yeah, they do. Uh, they have a lot of cycle with Arcane Intellect and Azure Drakes. And they have a... Look, all of their cards feel really impactful against Warrior. Even just like Frostbolting Face at times can like buy you an extra turn. Um, duplicate allows for a lot of card advantage as well, so... It's just... Uh, it depends on what it falls on. Duplicate on a Mana Worm is not that great, but it has the potential to be good. Everything has the potential to be good. Yeah, I think in this matchup, um, you know, duplicating Mana Worm is never really a problem. I think the one you don't want to duplicate is likely Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, pretty much all the other minions have a little bit more value because uh, they either draw cards or they're very cheap, effective threats. Mm -hmm. Things of that nature. So duplicate doesn't look like it's going to be the play here at all. It's just second Sorcerer's Apprentice. Maybe a Frostbolt here on one of these Acolytes, but... I think I'd like to see Lead Paint get a little bit more aggressive than that. He's going to play Duplicate, though. And 
Is it the trade? Yeah, trades off the Sorcerer Apprentice. Definitely doesn't want that duplicated. Second Bouncing Blade. It's so interesting. I, I wonder what he cuts for those, because Revenge, I would think, would be what you would cut. But we also see a Revenge. So he, he has at least one. Hmm. Yeah, notice it's not Counterspell at this point. Ooh, Fiery War Axe. Pretty darn good one. He's like maximizing his draw from these Acolytes as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's a duplicated Mana Worm. And with Sludge Belcher back behind, that's kind of the, I, that's really the ideal situation, I think, for Zelay, is the fact he's clearing off the board position and then has a taunt uh, in the face of just a couple of threats and has a brawl in the face of, of more than two threats, I think. Uh, yeah. So this is looking pretty good for him. Does take four from the Azure Drake, but I don't think he's too sad with that. His hand feels like it's got all the tools to fight against this. Yeah. There we go. He could cheat it out. No! I guess he doesn't want to play in a brawl that much. Yeah, but I like just playing the Doctor Boom here. Doesn't need to add anything to it. This is often enough to force some action from Zelay. He does have Shield Block and just picked up Shield Slam. So that's an option, but... Uh, yeah, I guess holding on to Brawl has some merit. Uh, at least one of them. Just because you know that there's a duplicate. You, you kind of feel like Lead Paint's going to flood the board next turn if he feels like he don't have any more Brawls. Yep. This is actually a pretty low-risk Brawl from Zelay here, too. You might be looking at this and going, well, if the Dr. Boom wins, he can't Shield Block and Shield Slam anymore. But with that Bouncing Blade in hand, he's able to really get kind of pretty much max value from that if the if the uh, Dr. Boom would live that turn. Yeah, I, I suppose, I mean using Brawl plus Bouncing Blades to remove a single card <laughs> isn't the best of value, but it, it's still sort of that emergency plan that you have if, if everything goes wrong. Curious how Zelay is going to choose to, cho to play this one. If he doesn't attack the Boombot, um, I don't really know what this says about his hand. I mean, attacking the Boombot, armoring up in second setting, and setting a second Fiery War Axe feels like a pretty decent play, but I think he's trying to send the signal to Lead Paint that he might be a little bit more desperate and the shield block, I mean, this may be Lead Paint's turn to just kind of dump his hand onto the board. He just saw Brawl. He's also like make a pretty weak turn with the shield block here. Yeah. Whew, I don't know about this one. This is a tough spot. I think you just go halfway. No, you nope. don't go You halfway. go full way. I you suppose. Go, you go all or you go home. I guess this is sort of halfway, because he could have played the Sorcerer's Apprentice as well. But this is also going to lock out the weapon from maybe cleaning up the board if Second Brawl does come out. So. Can't imagine Zelay not brawling this position. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. the, this was the turn he set up for by casting the shield block. So, Flame Waker is going to live. That may force a, uh, a Bouncing Blade here. Ooh, and... Boombot hits for four. So that could open up opportunity, a potential opportunity to do later on in the game to uh, for Lead Paint to burn him out, but still a lot of health to get through. And there's the Bouncing Blades. That's the top corner four times. What are the odds of that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are the odds of Bouncing Blade animations that's the real rng all right this is one i think you go for it well this now he's in like... both brawls and he's locking out some spells with this low feb yeah. this is actually a pretty fantastic turn here from lead paint the thing is now his fireballs cost five. Oh no second sludge belch has got to be a welcome draw here there's anything to stop the bleeding at this point yeah Lead Pain looks very stressed, but Double Belcher means that there's absolutely no way you can die going into the next turn. Uh, he is going to go down to uh, 13, but there's a Naga Sea Witch on the board that can't die. So there's no chance for Fireball, Fireball Ping. Yeah, Archmage would have been a good draw here as well. Just anything to get some extra gas going, but how does Lead Pain tackle it? I mean, is there ever a chance you use a burn spell in the get go? I don't know. I feel like you need to throw those out the face. Maybe even Frostbolt the face here, just to block out weapons. 
And that's exactly what he's going to do. Frostbolt face. Yeah. It's laid down to it, 10, but answering these two 5-2s. Oh, and a shield ooh. block. That's a massive draw right now. Yeah, that gets rid of the opportunity for Lead Paint to get run or run or fireball to close out the game. So, Lead Paint's sort of out of resources now. Even if he draws an Archmage Antonidas, he's still going to need an extra turn to draw into some type of spell to get that ball rolling. And I think that's something Zelay's thinking about right now, is what if the last threat is a Ragnaros or an Archmage? If I choose to use the Shield Slam and the Execute, it means I likely don't have an answer to one of those two cards. Yeah, I mean, he can also just remove the Lothem. So many and uh, even if he takes... Uh... That draws pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think he can use the Shield Slam. All right. Next turn, he's basically going to get out of reach of just about everything that Lead Paint can do. So I think that was probably just going to be the game here. Yeah, even if Lead Paint draws Archmage, you can't really use it here. No castable spells in hand after the Naga Sea Witch is gone. Arcane Elect, decent pickup. Yeah, that guy's a bit late. <laughs> Don't think there's any secrets left. It's a possibility that there might be a counterspell still left in the deck. I don't really remember seeing one in the matches that he played on Friday. Another or, time. yeah, Friday. <laughs> That's the, that feel when you look at Golden Monkey and just think, ah, another taunt. <laughs> I think it's time to tank up. That's the way it agrees. Indubitably. Yep, up to 20 versus one card for lead paint. Yep, no secret from that mad scientist either. I think this slides out. He's going to have to fireball that. <laughs> oh gosh, this feels bad. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, but then this water elemental is going to block out <laughs> everything for the rest of the entire game. <laughs> it's got a high chance to do so. Yeah. Zelay's still going to take his time, though. There's He does have still have options, even despite having the Golden Monkey. Uh, at, this this point, at this point, I'd just be on autopilot. Maybe I know the TJ plays. <laughs> I, just, I just slam Monkey. Slam TJ's like, ah, the head. Smack the face. Armor up. I'll just close my eyes and click buttons. It'll work. Yeah. I, I've already counted this win on my tracker <laughs> in this game. I've already put that tally. Belay is thinking about, is there any way I can lose this game? That's what he's thinking about right now. Yeah. That's the sign of a smart player, because I'd be thinking about, how do I win the next game? <laughs> That's what he's planning out right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to continue to play very patiently, though. This is probably better than just slamming the gold monkey, honestly. Getting the Grom on the board, yeah. Yeah. That's okay, but not enough. This 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 is like the point where like you're watching like uh, the Nature Channel, and like the lion starts to eat the gazelle. <laughs> and you think they're gonna pan the camera away, but they just don't. <laughs> they just sit there. The na the narrator even just stops talking about it, and it just the camera just stays there. Old monkey, let's go. All right. Well, let us see. Almost has the man of the cast a, a Matt Paggle <laughs> after he armors up. Tanks up, excuse me. Don't get him confused. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Lead Paint's face. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? Now Physical I draw the play cannons? Yeah. Physical hey! Pain. Deathwing, or what's the saying afterwards? Right. <laughs> Swagwing. <laughs> right, Blood well. Paint finally gets to scoop him up here. Two games apiece. Yep. Tying it all up. And uh, Paladin Druid remaining for Zelay. And Mage Shaman remaining for Lead Paint. That's Temple Mage and Aggro Shaman. 
So both of those, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Agro Shaman against Druid is, is sort of hit or miss. You can get the nuts early with minions and and just blow them out, but Druid also has some, some tools to fight back, and sometimes they can even race. So uh, definitely have to see. It's going to depend on these matchups. I, I'd imagine Zelay would try and... I don't know. It, it's it's tough. It, it's basically like a best of three with two decks each. Um, if I was in this spot, I would want... For, like, if I was in Zelay's spot here, I'd want my Druid to line up against the Shaman. Yeah. Um, and I think... I think this way, this this favors lead paint now. Like in the if both players are, are queuing up their decks at random, it doesn't matter, which is I think what they should be doing at this point, mm-hmm. because they're so massively favored one way or the other. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, you, th- you think of the aggro shaman matchup, you're like, oh well, this just beats druid, right? Druid loses to uh to the quick decks, but if druid kind of has their disruption early on, and they get to the late game and they're in like at all in a reasonable position, their threats are just so much larger than the shamans are. Um, you know, in my experience, I've played a lot of both of those decks. On the Shaman side, I'm always uncomfortable versus Druid. On the Druid side, I'm always very comfortable versus Shaman. Yeah. And now, if, if Lead Paint wins this one, I mean, he's got to win against either Secret Paladin or Druid with a Tempo Mage, which Tempo Mage does well against both of those. So I yeah. think he's he's got to be feeling pretty confident. Uh, moving in after seeing these these deck choices from the from this game, like you said. Yeah, so I'm even going to keep Sludge Belcher in somebody's hand, and I don't mind it in this matchup. One of the ways I have found I have trouble with ag- with uh, Aggro Shaman in this matchup is when my opponent just kind of plays really good stuff on curve and then has the Sludge Belcher leading into a big threat. Um, mm-hmm. So I really like this ca- keep from Zelay. But Lead Paint, faced with three very good options on the first one, is going to uh, favor the Druid Hero Power here. Oh, that's a good draw from Zelay. Yeah. I really like the Druid here power over the life tap in this situation. Because a lot of times, you, you don't have room to life tap in fields. So you're just sort of taking the Druid here power um, to one, in an emergency fight back on the board if you have no other play. And two, for that Doomhammer later in the game, just to make it extra reach. Because uh, life tap not interacting with the board can sometimes be come back to bite you in a, a matchup where it's all about the board in the early game. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you're overloading with so many of your cards, um, that puts a lot of pressure on your mana. Like, where normally you'd be able to squeeze in a life tap and said you're overloaded for two. Uh, so I think I would tend to agree with the Druid Hero Power here as well. Good opening for Lead Paint, though. I mean, Finley into Haunted Creeper means his board is a little bit more stable um, than Zelay was hoping, I imagine. Yeah. But with Secret Keeper Revenge here... I think his turn two is still looking totally fine for him. Yeah, especially with Konghammer, because sometimes it, you can get in a situation where events just doesn't matter. Because the Shaman is just going to ignore and go face regardless. But Konghammer forces the the Avenge to you know be be procked, be used. So it's a it's a great draw. It also just makes so many attacks have to go into whatever you choose a Konghammer, and it also makes you able to make conscious choices as to as to what to trade into so that that might be a little bit of a change actually okay he's going to go ahead and remove the secret keeper i guess it's just a little bit too big of a threat yeah i think with the tunnel trawl coupled with this he feels very comfortable doing this and cog hammer is just going to really heavily disrupt this at this point god what a great turn for Soleil. he's only taking three damage also there hasn't been that crazy draw like the you know, Tunnel Trog into Coin Feral Spirits, or even just like Tunnel Trog into Knife Juggler into Feral Spirits. There wasn't a crazy draw. It was a decent opening for Lead Paint, but sometimes decent openings aren't enough, and we'll see if Zelay can can keep pushing and hold on to this board. Ooh, Ooh. Flame Tongue Totem. I That's like a good it. one. Yeah, but I, gosh, the trade here looks so appealing, too. You know, is this a spot where Lead Paint has to continue to fight the board position? And that's really the power that Haunted Creeper can provide in these spots, is that it, it keeps your opponent on, like, sort of a back foot. Wow, and Zelay even has options for this turn. Hmm. Options being Knife Juggler plus Shield of Minibot or Powder Shredder. Knife, knife Juggler plus Shield of Minibot means that he'll have five total damage. Um, so it means that he, he might get some cleaner 
clears onto the board, if he gets like a juggle to hit the one one, or even a juggle to hit the flame tank totem, there's three out of five outcomes that I think are good. So Lay also has the option to just take three damage this turn and kill off the rest of the board presence and isolate the Flame Tongue Totem, which I have found to be very effective uh, versus Aggro Shaman. Is just rather than killing the Flame Tongue, is isolating the Flame Tongue. Yeah. You get punished by a few things. Uh, Feral Spirits being one of them. And also, uh, I, I guess, Argent Horse Rider, but... Oh, misses yeah. the juggle. And is that a missed attack as well? Zolay passed before he attacked with the second Hunter Creeper token, didn't Oh no, he used it into the into the Flame Tongue Totem. My apologies. Totem, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait a minute, this can't be right. Yeah, usually he would show some emotion on his face if that were the case, but he's just like, <laughs> This yeah. belch is going to do a lot of work, though, I feel. Yeah, Lead Paint's still kind of tiptoeing around this one. I feel like this is starting to swing a little bit in Zelay's favor. And the fact that the Lava Burst is going to have to come out to take care of the Sludge Belcher. Zelay's just too high, I think, for Lead Paint to really think about the burn plan at this point. And I think yeah. that's what he's thinking about this turn as well. You know, if he forces through five points of damage, he has five in hand, and he would need to, if Zelay doesn't have Sludge Belcher, he would need to draw 10 points of burn. So, what is the likelihood of that? This is kind of an interesting Unlikely. play as well. So Finley's going to clear off the Haunted Creeper token here, and that too is just going to go to face. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sludge Belcher with a Mysterious Challenger to back it up. It usually lights out for the Aggro Shaman, because missing attacks, unless they draw into absurd amounts of burn, in, in like those turns leading up to it, a lot of times they're not going to be able to get through that much damage. I'm so they going to take his time here as well. Let's to figure out, is there any way I can lose this game from this spot? Yeah. There's a couple ways. A couple oh, crackles for six would do it. Yeah. Lava burst into runner runner crackles for six. Plus one more damage to the face. That's lethal. Yeah, the caulk hammer looking like he's going to take that damage too. I wonder if yep. he's thinking about that. I wonder if Soleil's quite literally thinking about, well, if he rips two Crackles, I can actually still live through two Crackles yeah, in the right situation. Like, if he just plays Sludge Belcher and attacks the 1-1 one, one here, with the... Sh I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't keep my life total preserved here, personally. Yeah, but he's not going to. And this is tough for Lead Paint. If he wants to kill the Sludge Belcher and get through it this turn, it takes basically his entire turn. <laughs> It takes his entire turn, and it also takes, you know, a five damage burst spell that he would love to point at the face instead. And then he knows that, hey, we're going into turn six. Mysterious Challenger is probably going to come out. Then what do I do? I have an empty board. I'm overloaded for two on turn seven. What am I going to do with five mana against the Mysterious Challenger and a Shielded Minibot? Nothing. That's what you're going to do. Yeah. This one, I think, is this one's pretty much done. And that's why Zelay kept the Sludge Belcher here. Forcing Lava Burst from the Shaman, if you disrupt their early game strong enough, it is lights out. Yeah. And Zelay, a player that takes his time in his turns, he even knows what the play is on that turn. You slam that Mysterious <laughs> Challenger. You end hey, that there's turn. The, there's that first crackle. <laughs> Maybe we could have gotten there. <laughs> yeah. I, I still think I, I think that's the play. You, you, point, you just hope. You point the crackle at the face and you pray. Oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> what else are you going to do? What's he going to do? He used to draw, like, ancestral knowledge into, like, two burn spells. I mean, I think right, you're so right. I just, he, it just feels dumb. He, he overloads this turn for one. So next turn he goes in with seven mana. That's enough mana for ancestral knowledge, lava burst, and a second crackle. <laughs> <laughs> he We're only deep on this one. He only needs to crackle for five this turn. If he's confident that his other crackle that he'll draw in the next turn will overload for six, or will, will hit for six. Yeah, Ooh. Crackle for sure. Now he has zero outs. <laughs> that feels so bad. Yeah. yeah. Zelay has locked this one up. There's no way that Lead Paint's getting through this. Yeah. We're going to game six, boys. Yeah. I mean, 
let's see. Is there a miracle that can happen? I'm thinking any other outs, but Delay can navigate this in a way uh, I'm almost positive where he can set up a lethal for next turn. Um, if he... All right, if he Blessing of Kings his... Uh, Mysterious Challenger and hits face and plays shield and mini bot and puts his opponent to 14. Ooh, maybe not. Is there a way that he can guarantee it over two turns? Yeah, just, I mean, if, if your opponent has to point a burn spell one of your minions, that's pretty much guaranteed. I think Soleil's thinking about is there any reason to ever play the piloted shredder? Like, yeah. because if Lead Paint kills the piloted shredder and gets a Doomsayer, I mean, that's. That's how high of a chance Soleil has to win this game, is I actually don't even think he's supposed to play the Pilot Shredder here. 14, 15, 16. Yeah, that's, it's yeah. not enough, but it, it also, by trading in, he eliminates Chargers. So he could have just gone face. He has Noble Sacrifice still up, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So if he just went face with that 7 damage, I think that, that removes less outs. Yeah, there we go. Game six, Zalei is up three games to two. Zalei kind of looks a little bit frustrated with his play there too, but I think it's right. I don't think you're supposed to play. Um, I don't think you're supposed to play the uh, Pilot Shredder, and I think what he was thinking about the alternative was just trading into three three, loading up on the Mysterious Challenger, and attacking for eleven. That was the alternative, I think that turn. Um, but either way, it's it's pretty much impossible for Lead Paint to climb out of that situation. Yeah, I definitely say so. But now Zalei is one win away from. From playing dog in the finals of this future tournament number two. Lead Paint has to win two games in a row now. They are doable. Tempo Mage versus Druid is going to be the first matchup that he has to overcome, which is definitely possible. Yeah, it's really going to rely on whether or not Lead Paint lands like a really devastating Mirror Entity. Almost every single time Mirror Entity gets played against me and I'm playing the Druid, I feel like the game is so hard to win. But if that card doesn't come into, into effect, you kind of just can one for one all of their cards and then scale into your bigger threats. Um, but that's still difficult to do. I mean, Tempo Mage is kind of going, you know, toe for toe with you in a lot of those steps. And Lead Paint's even got Water Elemental back behind it. So just the extra health on that one minion that also has the freeze effect, you know, that affects the combat a lot. Yeah. Yep. Very true. And uh, both players are just going to hold out their mulligans. When it gets down to this close, you, you really don't just don't want to give any additional information away to your opponent. Uh, if you show your opponent that you're mulligan away more cards, it might um, make them more inclined to to keep like removal spells early on. It just it's, a lot of the times it doesn't have effect, but in that small case where it does, you don't want to have given your opponent an advantage in a situation where it matters. Yeah, good opening here for Lead Paint. Mana Worm is by far the best minion. Uh, that you can have on turn one with Tempo Mage. Makes li playing Living Roots a little bit awkward as well. Yep. That's one of the reasons why it's so good. You kind of mentioned this at one point, that Mana Worm was the key that unlocked the door to Mage Paradise. Yeah. <sighs> you never get out the shade here. You're kind of screwed for your next couple turns. Yeah. He's thinking about Flame Cannon, too. I mean, if you innovate shade and they Flame Cannon it, you're pretty much done, Zo. Yeah. All right, well, he's on the I'm Hero Power and this sucker next turn plan. Yeah. Looking at turn four, Dr. Boom, I think is Soleil. It's where his aim is at right now. So Lead Paint's going to look to get on board super quick and try to punish Soleil for this. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. Dealing with a Dr. Boom as a Tempo Mage early on in the game is so tough. Let's see. Frostbolt, Arcane Missiles, and Arcane Blast. That's uh, five, <laughs> eight, eight total damage. Even those three spells don't deal with Dr. Boom by themselves. So he's going to have to trade in his board. It's going to be a lot of resources used early on. Uh, duplicate, don't even know. Uh, Zelay might be worried about Counterspell, but he saw last game that there was no secrets pulled. He saw Duplicate Mirror Entity only. Yep. Got to be feeling confident. This is a... This is check for Mirror Entity. Yeah. Sees that it's not there, and this is going to be an arcane missile from Lead Paint. Would love to pick up a flame micro with this, I'm sure. Unstable portal. Let's see. Eh, not Ooh. quite. No. Usually, want to. Oh, jeez. Oh no. That's that's potential disaster. 
everything that can go wrong will go wrong. It feels when you're when you're on that downhill spiral, and Lead Paint is experiencing that right now, especially since I can only imagine what this turn will hold. I mean, you just gotta go for it, right? <laughs> this this is the turn. It's not like you don't have plays after going for it. You have Azure Drake next turn. You could even keep her next turn if you really wanted to. I think he's, Maybe he's worried about Fireball. Maybe he's worried about, hey, I'm at 20 health. I've taken a lot of damage. Maybe I need to be a little bit proactive. But I will say alternative is like Keeper of the Grove this turn into Dr. Boom on turn 5 into Azure Drake Coin Wrath on turn 6. Yeah, and That's could, that's really the only alternative I'm seeing, though. He can Keeper and Wrath this turn. Keeper plus Innervate Wrath this turn. Um, and just remove the board. That ties up your Dr. Boom till turn 6. It does, but you, it's not like you don't have a play for next turn. Um, yeah, but let's yeah, go just, <laughs> let's do it. Stop talking about it. Just do it. Now, do you trade the shade or not? That's. I think that's really the big issue here. Mm. It's a big pickup. That's a big pickup, but... A little too big. <laughs> unfortunately, Tempo Mage does not have access to Cast Spell Innervate. <laughs> what if he had Innervate and he was like so excited about the Ragnaros draw and he's like, yes! He innervates, he's like, oh, I only have seven mana, no! Yeah, unfortunately not the best and I don't even know what you do here. You just use your entire hand to, to remove a Doctor Boom and then hope that you draw into burn spells to win the game. That looks like it's going to be going to be the plan and... Kind of a rude interruption. Oh, that that's a good boom bot for him, though. Yeah. Zelay's just got all the cards. Take out the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, couple it with the Azure Drake and maybe even Bash for four here. I mean, you just saw Frostbolt and Arcane Blast. You know, start Give the attacks point. with the Shade. Yeah, you have Savage Roar in your hand. You have the second Shade, which means that you're probably going to play that before the Savage Roar. I like it. Why not? Why not, indeed. Two Sorcerer's Apprentice in hand for lead paint. Uh, pretty much no help. And this is looking like lights out. This is a very strong start from Zelay here. And lead paint's hand was also a little bit weak in the open. Had like two fantastic cards and also two kind of mediocre cards. And that Dr. Boom's going to be a little bit late, I'd say. Wow, Zelay. Second interview pickup. And he's got an Azure Drake on the board. He can just wrath and smack down a pile of the shredder and just push the nine damage. And your opponent didn't answer either of your minions last turn, so they probably just can't do anything. Yeah. Right positioning from Zelay as always. Picture perfect play. And I think that's going to do it. I mean, there's this Dr. Boom means that you die on board. Yeah, there's no way. You can always Play. flame cannon Doomsayer. <laughs> you know, when your tournament life is on the line, you gotta you gotta go for it. Even though it's a very small chance, you have to take the one in three, and then you have to take the the one in I don't know eighty something. Now I don't even know how many two drops there are, but that it's is that's enough that damage. Going to do it. Yep, and even a little bit of overkill if you wanted to with the innervate plus the druid of the claw. So that's going to be Zelay moving on to the feature number two finals to fight against Dog. Yep, he's actually Zelay and Dog have met. Um, I checked this right before this event. I believe they've met four times, and they're split on those matches. They're two games apiece. Or, I'm sorry, two matches apiece. Uh, lifetime between the two of them in tournament play. Oh wow! So this is this has a lot more implications than than just a uh, just a spot at a twenty five k premier tournament. It also is bragging rights, which is yep. arguably just as important. I think it's more important personally. Yeah, especially for pro players uh, at the the top end of competitive play. But I, I'd say that was an impressive performance by Zelay. It looked like the weak point for Lead Paint was that that fifth deck that he brought, the Tempo Mage. Uh, it's a it's a good idea. It fits his theme for decks. Um, but maybe uh, just a little bit outside of, you know, not used to playing p five decks in a competitive environment. You, you see Lead Paint, he plays those four decks all the time. Adding Tempo Mage might have been his downfall. Yeah, I just, it didn't really perform that well, but I can't, 
I can't fault him for bringing it. I think his play was on point in a lot of situations. He just yeah. found himself in a lot of tough spots, and Zelay just continuing to make the best use out of his cards turn after turn. It's you know, it's it's one of those matchups where you're going to have to get the right draws if you want to beat a player like Zelay. He's just so good that you need card quality to beat him, and yeah. didn't show up this time for Lead Paint. Yeah, Tempo Mage sometimes has that inconsistencies. But the final is said. It is Zelay versus Dog. We want to give you guys another quick reminder that uh, ONOG and Geico will be at PAX East uh, just next week. So uh, if you are going to be at PAX East, make sure you check out the boot. There are still 128 spots open uh, for the major that will be taking place. So that's a $10,000 prize pool tournament with 43 Hearthstone Championship points on the line. Signups are on-site only. So if you're going to be there and you want to play in that tournament, make sure you, you, you head on over there. Uh, and sign up. If you're not going to be there, check it out on Twitch. We'll be right here on this channel uh, next week, the 22nd to the 24th uh, for that major. Uh, also, still doing the CyberPower PC giveaway, so during the break, head over to guycode.onog.gg, sign up to win that PC, and enter in uh, for that open tournament, which happens on April 30th uh, in two weeks. But we are going to have to take a quick break before we jump into the finals, but don't go anywhere. The conclusion to feature tournament number two here at the One Nation of Gamers 2016 circuit will continue right after this.